Hello, my name is David Mandel. I'm your instructor in this class, uh, 240L, or I'm sorry, CIS 240L Linux Installation and Configuration. Um, basically, we're going to learn to um, the basics of administrating a Linux or a Unix system. Okay. Uh, and this is just the introduction right now. I'm having a little bit of trouble doing the introduction uh, for several reasons. I'm at the beach on a short working vacation. I brought my laptop and my laptop really isn't big enough to uh, create videos so I had to learn a whole new method of creating videos. Um, the other thing is my internet connectivity is really bad and I'd like to be using desire to learn as part of this uh, little video, but I just can't get internet connectivity for anything this evening. So anyway, we'll do just fine. What I want to do now is go over the uh, syllabus and the schedule a little bit. The schedule I happen to have on my laptop in a PDF format as, and the syllabus as well. Um, remember in Linux or most Unixes there is a PDF reader by the name Opcubular uh, like this or you can download AcroRead from Adobe which is free to download although it's not open source. Um, the program that I'm using is fully open source. Anyway, uh, and I think the name of this is Schedule. Um, this is the winter term schedule for the winter of uh, 2014. So let's take a look at it. It will come up here I can minimize this guy. Whoop. Oh boy. Minimize that guy so we can see it. And this is the schedule. You'll see that there are, well, it says 11 labs here, but I believe we'll probably only have 10 labs, uh, 1 through 10. Oh, I should mention that I've got to reorder the labs a little bit. Some of the labs in here are mixed up. It's five and then four and then six. I will renumber everything so eventually by the time you do them it will be lab one on week one, lab two on week two, and so on and so forth. However, it doesn't matter in that all the labs, are, you have the correct labs here. It's just that I'd like to change their numbering. Okay, this tells you what to read uh, for the weeks. This tells you where the quizzes are. I believe we have three quizzes, or when the quizzes are due. I believe we have three quizzes and ten labs. The bulk of this course is the labs. Um, there's reading material to do. There are, um, there's reading material from our textbook, which is this book right here uh, by Mark Sobill, um, Fedora and Red Hat Administration um, Enterprise Linux. However, you may use any distribution that is reasonable. That would be Fedora, Red Hat, uh, Debian, um, I personally will probably use OpenSUSE for most of this course. Um, most distributions work fine. If you do use like Ubuntu or Minic Linux Mint or even even one of the ones like OpenSUSE, make sure you use the command line as much as you can because the GUIs are very distribution specific so if you get too dependent on the GUIs all you can administrate is that version of Linux. If you want a job in the world if they say you need a Linux administrator you don't ask what distribution you just say yeah I can handle that. In fact if they say I need a Unix administrator yeah I can handle that. In fact 
Yes, once I even was offered a job as a Microsoft Systems Administrator based on my knowledge of open source software. Well, okay. Strange, but true. Um, okay, as you will see from the material here, um, assignments are kind of given out on Monday. They are due on Sundays at midnight or 11.59 p.m. Um, if there's holidays or whatnot, well, you got to take care of that yourself. Um, if there's two things due on one day, well, it's up to you to schedule them. Um, if you do get things in a little bit late, um, well, read the syllabus. There's a way of handling that. Um, okay, next thing, let's cancel this. Oh, I guess the if you read the whole thing there is a listing of holidays and uh, due dates and well great availability whatever okay next thing to look at is whoop brought up the wrong one of course next thing to look at is syllabus You can read the syllabus on your own. Um, it gives my office hours, uh, well, or lack of office hours. Um, it says, contact me anytime you want, uh, including it gives my telephone number. Please feel free to call me. You'll notice your first assignment in a distance learning class such as this is telephone your instructor. I do this. I'm told that's a little bit unusual. But I do this because I want you to telephone, or because I want you to be a, feel free to contact me at any time. Um, you guys are you guys have paid a good tuition to take this class. You've hired me. You're paying my salary. Um, let me help you. Um, next thing, oh, that's also long term. Um, once you finish this class, you're a member of the open source community. If you say you're a member of the open source community, and anybody, in, you know, if you're a member of the open source community, feel free to contact me at any time. Years and years after this class is done, that's just fine with me. A uh, lot of people contact me. Um, course description. We're going to learn to administrate Linux systems. We're also going to learn a fair bit about the open source community and open source philosophy. That's the way I do things. That's part of the class. Um, okay, here, learning outcomes are up on the website. Teaching philosophy. Um, it's important to note that I do not grade on a curve. I grade uh, based on your potential. I attempt to grade based on your potential. You're never working against your fellow students. We want people to cooperate and work together. That's the way the open source community works. You get extra points for helping one another. Um, um, so, you know, I, I don't have any goals on giving so many low grades or anything like that. My goals is that everybody learns in this class. Um, well, even more important is meeting your goals. So, class attendance, well, that's not relevant for an open, uh, for a distance learning class, but continual week by week class participation is the equivalent of class attendance, and that is important. Um, not only is it important for you, and it is, but it's important for your fellow students too. You're supposed to communicate with one another and help one another and you know you're not holding up your part of the bargain unless you participate. Communication, feel free to contact me. Um, hardware, well it specifies hardware down here but we will um, you know we live with what we have. We part of being a Unix administrator is to figure out how to make the systems you have 
do the work you need to do. And so while there's formal, while there's some issues on hardware here, you know, the main thing is we will figure out how to make things work. Uh, at Linux uses very modest hardware, so at the minimum, so you can get by with very little hardware. On the other hand, if you happen to have a supercomputing sitting in your closet, it probably runs Linux. Um, grading philosophy. My grading philosophies is, you know, I, I use the normal thing. Uh, an A is over 90%, a B is 80 to 90%, so on and so forth. But notice in big bold letters here, uh, over 90% and have all quizzes and labs submitted in a timely fashion. 80% uh, uh, or for a B have 80% and almost everything handed in. Uh, one missing lab, okay. And I do indeed routinely give um, like a B to somebody that has over 90% but has a missing lab. I don't um, You've been warned, I don't feel shy about doing that. One of the reasons I do this is where we really learn things is in doing the labs. Um, I don't care all that much about the quizzes. They're kind of a formality, but I really do care about the labs. I've personally written the labs. I spend a lot of time thinking about the labs. And there's a lot of flexibility in the labs, so you can customize them to meet your needs or your particular situation. I do not feel the least bit bad if you tend to customize the labs to make them fit you. In fact, I feel good about that. That's what I want you to do. Okay. Quizzes, labs. Um, oh, in terms of the labs, when you submit the labs, submit them through Desire to Learn and submit them in a Unix format because this is a Unix class. Can I read a .doc file uh, from Microsoft Office? Well, yes, I can read them. I can even write them. Will I complain about those? Um, I probably will, take, I will not take any points off, but I will complain because that's the tradition in the open source community. So um, we do complain. So, um, but if you give me an ODT or a PDF file, that's just fine. If you give me a dot .doc, well, expect a little complaint, but I guess that's okay too. Um, I do like plain text. I use a lot of plain text. I like plain text, but I, you will notice I use a lot of ODT files from LibreOffice and a lot of PDF files. Um, due dates. I do accept late work within reason. Don't try to give me everything in the last two weeks of the class. That's not reasonable. But normally I will ding you for about five points or if it's really late, maybe 10 points on a 35 point lab. Um, and um, and that's okay. You most people can take a you know two or three of those, and it doesn't even affect your grade. If it's continually, it may affect your grade, but you can still get a very reasonable grade uh, out of the class if quite a bit is a little late. Um, the reason I accept late work is because I found in the real world doing software projects, other projects. Well, the textbooks say that we never have, that things are supposed to be on time and um, um, and we never have anything late and we have big schedules and everything's perfect. I'm afraid I found in practice that just is not the case. Um, uh, things, if you handle things correctly, you can be a little bit late and usually get away with it. Um, things can go bad. You can get fired and lose your job and then you're, you know, then you're trying to go someplace with a resume that says screwed up on last job. That's not good. But usually if you're tactful, 
you're reasonable, you try to get things in on time, you're a little bit late, um, but you keep people fully informed of the of where you are at any time and what problems you're having, you can usually get away with being a little late, maybe a little over budget, and if you turn in a good product that people are happy with two years from now when they're looking at a new another new project they will look around they'll look at you they will say man that's a good product that he gave us and they won't say it was late it, it, and over budget they'll say it was good on the other hand if you were under budget and got it in early but you gave them a crummy product Two years from now, when they're issuing a new contract, they remember the garbage you gave them, and they forget all the other stuff. And that's fair. And that's the way it is. That's why I do accept things a little late. Now, don't abuse this. That's the way you get cut off at the knees. But, um, but within reason. Um, okay anything else academic integrity read this section but also remember academic integrity particularly in the open source world it does not keep people from working together and working as a team it merely it, it is about stealing other people's work pawning on it using somebody's idea and not giving them credit for it if you use somebody else's idea and give them credit for it if two or three of you are working together and actually everybody is part of the team an active member of the team that's fine um, on the other hand true plagiarism is true plagiarism and is wrong disabilities we try to accommodate people with dis disabilities I, I make a real effort to try and do this um, as as well as I can okay well disclaimer everything I just said is subject to change well that's kind of a boilerplate disclaimer but it, it's a little bit true too Okay, in the desire to learn, which I'm afraid I probably can't show you because I can't log on to the internet, um, you will find some other sections. You'll find an instruction uh, section about the instructor. Um, I'm a long-term open source advocate and developer and user, um, a former Peace Corps volunteer from way 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 back when I'm semi-retired I do some farming I still do um, um, some work in the open source community I was one of the founding members of the um, uh, Portland Linux Unix group and I've been open active in the open source community I was also a founder of an open source co uh, group called um, linuxfund.org which was to help fund open source projects small um, small oh lesser known open source projects that couldn't get funding through traditional sources um, and that's probably about it um, so have fun and do have fun that's what all of this is about so um, that's good. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.